with us. I traveled with Imam Warthi Muhammad at the second day. You know, I was in that peace for several years. And Imam would say to me, you know, he knew I was in that peace. Because I really was wondering where we were going. I saw the divisions among us. And the more I traveled, but I was confident about what I read in the uh, Ramadan session. Imam said, don't worry about this community after I'm gone. Allah is going to be with this community as he was after the passing of Abu Lahd Muhammad. He said, Allah will show you who the leader is. And more and more, I was in Imam Muhammad's presence, Imam Muhammad II. I can't call, I don't call him no father. Imam Muhammad, and I, you see when you don't know him, but I knew him as a young, unlike I didn't come from the ranks of the minister's captain and secretary. I, I got kicked out of the student minister's class. Actually, you know why I got kicked out of the minister's class? I was up at City College. I was one of the biggest fishermen. And the minister at the time didn't want anybody out fishing him. So he pretty much told me to take a rest. <laughs> so I didn't get to come back into ministry until 1978. This Imam Martin Muhammad II was actually a student at Clare Muhammad School. Way Imam Muhammad was teaching. But we're having a convention this year in New York, New Jersey. And we need your support. Now, we need your support. There's a sign up sheet. And the sign up sheet is we're going to go out on the street, New York and New Jersey. We're going to drive New York. We're going to Times Square with a picket sign. And it's got a picture of Imam Muhammad picking up the American flag. A picture of him with Pope John Paul II standing so the American people know who is the people that's making America greater again. Not great again, greater. Because we're a part of that group that life blood was cut out from our mother. And we're new people. New Muslims, new Africans, New America. And so with this spirit, we're asking you for your support. New York now to do it. I, I could, couldn't believe you told me 40 years ago that I'd be standing here. Well, I did kind of believe I'd be in New York before, but that's another story. But I will tell you this. Allah is merciful. And I was at the masjid in Newark, and some brother, Brother Osman, they all know him, Adafan Shabit. He, he started crying. He said, Brother, I, I love you all. You so much. I thank you for what you're doing. I said, Brother, I don't know what I'm doing. I said, That's what y'all told me to do. Y'all told me to take y'all to this post and all my property to view. Huh? It's been a chapter day when I first came to New York in 1968. He was telling us how to dress. You see, he's still dressing, son. That's how he dressed like that. <laughs> and he was telling us to save our money. So, Nothing has changed. We have gotten modern equipment. And the modern equipment is the teachings of Imam Warthi Muhammad. Now let me tell you what a father thinks of his children. Some of them you won't leave nothing. But then the others, if you leave your intellectual property to him, because he's proven himself, and let's make no mistake about it, I served on the council now. Never told, I never would have believed I've been serving on city council in Linden. That's by law's permission. As I served on the council in Mamba. If you had told me then, I wouldn't have believed. But I tell you what I did hurt while I was on the council in Mamba. Now Muhammad said, if I had not become your leader, I was going to be the leader of Bill Amos in Chicago. And he said, my son, I put it before him. See, I put it before him. I didn't push it on him, but I put it before him. He said, son, we're going to build a mosque in Chicago. He said, but I happen to have come to your leader. And out of his love for us, these great pioneers, those who would walk the street selling papers and fish and even selling before we had papers. I don't remember. We were in the Pittsburgh Curie. I remember those days. Because Dr. Lodge Bob didn't get me out of jail unless you call the Baptist pulpit a jail. He pulled me out of the Baptist pulpit. Not as some low-level store for preacher, as a wide walker. 
Dr. King fought one